let me show you how to do a self critique on your portrait. I've been working on a portrait painting class called Paint an Amazing Acrylic Portrait and doing a sketch for that class. And while I was working on the sketch, I was noticing that the likeness was not exactly how I wanted it. It was just a little bit off. And I, I decided to do a self critique and I wanna show that process to you. Um, this does not replace a critique that you would have done uh, with a person like an instructor like myself or with fellow students um, like we have in our all access membership program. But it is very helpful for you to critique your own work and it will um, hopefully give you some tips on how to improve your portrait's likeness, proportions and other aspects um, so that maybe you might not need critiques as often or, you know, you can do a little work before you would decide to submit your work for a critique. Let's take a look here. I'm going to switch over to my screen. And what you'll want is to use Photoshop, GIMP, or another image uh, editing program. And you'll want to upload your reference photo first. This is the way I'm doing it. Um, so in this case here, I have the reference photo of my wife that I'm using for the class with the grid overlay uh, kind of subdued a little bit. I made it a little more uh, transparent just so we can see the image better. Then you want to go ahead and upload. Open up a file here um, that you're going to be critiquing from. So uh, in this case here, I'm going to pull up a photograph I took of my sketch. And it does help if you crop it off. You can use a cropping tool on the left and you simply drag this marquee over and then you hit um, image, crop, and it'll crop your image. And you can go ahead and drag your marquee. Um, hit the control C button to copy, or you can also uh, use the edit copy function here on the menu. But control C, after you have it selected, you can copy. And then you can go to your reference photo and hit control V, or let me just get back on there. There it is. Control V, or you can go down to your option here as well. It should hit here, paste. You would hit the paste. And Control V also will do paste for you. If you hold down the Control key and hit V, it will paste, or you can just go edit, paste. And that will basically overlay your sketch photograph on top of your portrait. Now, I do want to mention this. Um, that it is good to take a nice clear shot of your portrait sketch. Make sure you line up your camera or phone so that your photograph is not at a funky angle. <laughs> that makes it very difficult to critique. So you do need to make sure uh, that it is head on as much as possible. Uh, let me see if I can pull up a different image here for you to look at. This one's already cropped, but notice how everything's nice and square. Doesn't have to be perfect, but. You know, you just want to line up your shot, okay, get a good head on shot. Now, right now we've got the image way too large. Um, so you can go down to the transform option under edit, edit, scroll down to transform, and then it pulls up another dialog menu and select scale. Then you're going to hold down the control button and hit the minus key on your keyboard or, and just get this to show up on your whole screen and then you use your mouse and you're going to use left mouse button and you're going to drag the image to a smaller size so it fills the screen if you hit the mark move tool it'll give you a box asking apply the transformation we hit yes apply it now you pull down the control key and the plus key on the top of your keyboard and that should pull up your image then where it fills the whole screen. And it should be pretty close. Now, it, it might not be an exact match. So here, you're going to have a layer on top of your background. You can see that on the upper right. And what you'll want to do is go to the opacity and pull the opacity down to about 
Now you can see where your image is at. And what you wanna do is try to line up your image um, as much as possible, the sketch on top of the reference. And I try to line up the eyes. Now we can kind of see the grid lines too, where they line up. But here we can see where we're at. And now with this, I can zoom in and literally see where I might be off on my sketch. So I notice, and what I'm doing right here is I'm clicking the visibility tool on the left here. There's a little box with an eye on it and that indicates whether the layer is visible or invisible. So you can make it appear and disappear. And that way you can see as you're looking back and forth where you might be off. Now, as I cycle back and forth quickly, I can see the mouth looks a little bit off. Possibly I can resize this just a bit. So let me just do that and resize it a little bit. Click apply. You know, and I'm I'm pretty close. Pretty close, but I want it, I just want to make this more accurate. I can see with the nasolabial fold. Well, actually, let's look at the eyes first. I first of all, I want to really make sure I've got these eyes lined up. So let me get the uh, sketch opacity up just a bit higher. Now I'm going to use the move button on my keyboard. Okay, so on your keyboard, you have these arrow buttons, you know, to the kind of lower right of your keyboard, and you can then move your overlay image around when it's selected. So I'm moving it just to make sure that I've got the eyes lined up. Okay, so now that I know I have the eyes lined up, I can ask myself, how close am I? It looks like the mouth is a little too far down. So let's, let's do this. Let's just, we're gonna, what we're doing right now is hitting the transform and the scale option, okay? Under edit, go down to transform, scale, and then you're going to drag this little point up here a few degrees up. And we're just going to try to get that top part of the mouth to line up. Just get that top part of the mouth to line up because it's possible our photograph wasn't entirely wasn't entirely, um, you know, dead on square or in the, in, in the process of me, you know, moving the image and, and, uh, tr doing a transform on it and shrinking it down. It's possible I didn't shrink it down at the same rate. So what I'm trying to do is again, just lining everything up as much as I can eyes, top of the mouth. Now this gives me a good idea of what's going on. Okay, I think I'm going to have to use my move key and we're going to the move option on the left-hand side. So I'm selecting the move tool on the top bar and I'm going to, again, just make sure I've got those eyes lined up. And I, by cycling this on and off, making the layer appear and disappear, I can see where I'm at. Now, as I look at this, I can see I'm off in a few different points. It looks like my grid lines are pretty well matched up. Let's just take a look here. We can also line this up via the grid lines because we have the grid on both, you know, the sketch and on the reference photo. It looks like my grid lines are lined up pretty accurately. So that being the case, I can really then see, yeah, it looks like my grid lines are lined up. So you can double check yourself with that. So that being the case, 
Um, we can see where we're off. I know this has kind of been a long process to get to this point, but I just want to make sure I'm showing you correctly here how to do this. This is a little bit of a new thing. I, I don't normally do this very often on my portraits. So, but I just want to show you how you can do this and how you can benefit from it. Okay. So where are we off? The eyes are very accurate as far as I can tell. Um, they're a little off, like this, this uh, lower part of the lid could come down a bit. We could add a little visual weight right there. Um, tear duct maybe could extend downward just a bit on this side. The tear duct on the left eye could come up just a little bit, but I mean, overall, I'd say it's quite accurate. The eyebrow placement looks very accurate to me. Eyebrow comes up maybe a little high right here. But I think overall the eyes are quite accurate. Now, as I look at the nose, I see that the nose looks like it could be wide and a little bit on the left-hand side. The wing of the nose could come up a little bit higher on the right. Um, the nasolabial fold could move upward in this direction, 45 degrees to the upper right a little bit. So just basically expanding the width of it. The nasolabial fold on the left, that laugh line could come up substantially, you know, a few degrees higher here. So you can see. And then we look at the mouth, and the mouth could use adjusting as well because it looks like the bottom edge of the top lip needs to come up higher, a little bit straighter. Even the top, top edge, we can see that ghost line of where it should be. That could come up higher as well. Let's just knock the opacity down a little bit, 42%. We can see things a little bit more. Yeah, so we can see where that needs to come up higher. Now, teeth need to be then expanded a little bit higher as well. And then we can see that the chin is too narrow or too short on the bottom. It needs to come down a bit more. So that is also something that needs to be corrected. I'm very happy with the hair, how the hair turned out. Seems like it's lined up very well, almost like it was uh, traced on there with a projector. But I, I did sketch it by eye, so I'm very happy with how God helped me to do that. Um, but yeah, these, these areas here need to be adjusted. And so, you know, we put it up to full opacity. You can see those slight differences. So basically what I do then at this point is just write down a few notes or make some mental notes of what needs to be changed and then go back to the drawing board, so to speak, go back to the canvas and make those adjustments. Um, it also can be helpful to print off an image of this reference photo with the overlay and tape it next to your canvas, uh, get it a lot closer. Uh, if you look at my lessons um, on this class, you'll see that I did exactly that. Um, but make some notations of what need to be changed, possibly print off a reference photo with the overlay of your portrait um, where it's translucent and you can see through it, see what needs to be changed, like the chin is very obvious. And then make those changes, take another photograph of your portrait, and then check it again. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. So I'm going to make that image disappear. I'm going to pull up another image. Now, this is where I've already gone ahead and made these changes, but I haven't actually checked to see whether it was accurate or not. So let's take a look. So here's the sketch. We're going to have to crop this off. You can see how I have that lined up. doesn't really matter what's in the background. I mean, I just had this sitting on a table with some stuff on it. doesn't matter as long as you get a good straight-on shot. Okay, this is pretty straight-on. Not perfect, but pretty straight-on. Um, so we're going to take this and Control-C, okay? 
work for you can go down to the copy on edit okay and select that copy that go back to your other image control minus and then control v or paste here it is now we just need to hit transform scale control minus so we can manipulate this get this to fill the screen hit the move tool apply transformation yes apply control plus zoom in okay, we have it pretty close let's see what we have here all right opacity now i don't have the grid line on here because this this uh, image i took is where i whited out the grid so i'm going to have to just line it up without the grid and just try to line it up by eye first trying to line up the eyes and then let's see where we're at okay so when i look at it i like it i like it it's a lot better after having made these changes okay so the eyes are still quite accurate let's just double check i think they might be a little high let's just hit the move key got it selected on move down arrow button let me just see yep okay because you can look back and forth when you're uh, making it appear and reappear and you can see if it's moving or not see as we cycle back back and forth um but that looks good now let's check the nose can we have it about 50 percent the nose is still just a little shy just could come out a little bit more but it's definitely better than it was and I'm happy enough with the sketch that I can make these adjustments in the painting stage. Now, the sketch does not have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. We just want to get it as close as we can. I'll make these changes uh, when I actually paint it because I actually have the sketch all sealed. Um, I probably should have checked it first, but <laughs> I want to make sure I get the lesson done. I was pretty confident of how it looked when you know I saw it on, on the easel, but uh, this is really nice to double check it. Uh, okay, so nasal labial fold, remember that was too low in the original version. Now look at it. It's much more accurate. In fact, it looks like it's dead on. Thank you, Lord. I'm happy with that. Nasal labial fold on the, light, uh, the right side. Again, looks like it's just about dead on accurate there. Uh, how about the mouth? The mouth is not perfect, but it's better. The, the upper lip is much higher the teeth maybe are just still a little bit too small but i can make note of that and adjust it so it's good then when you have this on screen maybe make a few notes on a notepad and and then you can apply it to your painting and not forget about it i need to follow my own advice make sure i do that <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I want to make those changes then. just make sure I increase the size of the teeth when I actually paint it. Uh, lip overall looks good. Let's, let's check the jawline and the chin. Uh, it appears that I'm still a little bit short on that chin. Uh, you can see where it comes out on the reference photo. Yeah, it looks like I'm just a little bit short on the chin and on the jawline too. So that that's going to have to come down. I'll, I'll have to make note of that when I paint it. I mean, now one of the other things I could do is go over it with uh, titanium white. And I could just actually sketch the new line in where, where it should be. And it's not too far off, but on this side it could. It needs to come down or i could just go ahead and paint that in um opaquely when i get to maybe the halfway point of my portrait somewhere along there i could just account for that and add on to what's in there um it can be done either way uh really kind of is up to you it's just if you're going to be you know going over your portrait with titanium white see and that's if you have it sealed in now if you don't have it sealed in boy then you can just erase it and just redraw it see i i i should have should have probably checked this first before sealing in the, the sketch but it's okay uh i can make that change with the titanium white paint and uh you could do the same thing if you seal in your sketch uh, as long as your you know your your portrait overall you did a good job 
whiting out your grid lines and you know the, the face is is quite light and you don't have any smearing of your sketch on there then you could go and use some titanium white just make sure it's fluid add a little bit of matte medium or water and just make it fluid so it doesn't build up a lot of surface texture that you know would make it difficult to match the rest of your painting um, but if you can erase it go ahead and erase it and just do that and uh or whatever changes the changes you will need to make on your portrait will be different than the changes that i needed to make on mine but this could help you out a lot now uh that all being said you may not have photoshop it is a program you have to pay for subscription uh you can get gimp g-i-m-p for free it works very similar to photoshop and there's also apps you can download on your phone or your tablet and i'm not too familiar with those apps if i find some information on it from folks in our facebook group or our school then i'll make a notation under the video about that but uh, this is how you would do this based on a laptop or desktop computer uh, this is how you self critique your portrait this is a new process for me i think i'm probably going to employ it more i found it very interesting and, and helpful um and i know it is relying on technology but uh you know we use technology for so many things now i i think that as long as we're transparent with our process and we let people know how we do what we do it's just fine to use technology as long as we the artists are still creating it's all good hey i hope this video has been helpful for you if you like it give it a thumbs up if you're watching this on youtube subscribe to this channel check out my other videos that I have available for you at realisticacrylic.com to help you become the best portrait painter you can be. Uh, if you're watching this here within the school, just go ahead and uh, leave me a comment. Let me know how this video has been helpful. Check out the next video in our series, and I look forward to teaching you more. All right, God bless. We'll talk to you soon.